Now, today, I want to introduce you to Miss Tracy. Tracy, how are you? I'm doing wonderful today, Tony. Thank you so much for asking. God is good. Now, you were saying something when I was getting ready to start. You said put the D in there. You got it. Is that your middle initial? That is my middle initial. And, and if you don't use it, you might get another Tracy Malone. <laughs> okay, awesome. So Tracy D. Malone. That's amazing. Now, Tracy, where do you reside? So I'm in Florida. So I don't know if you remember, but last year I gave you the heads up that I was going to be selling and moving and doing the whole relocation thing. Oh. So yes, I did end up moving out of Illinois and moving into Florida. Wow, that's amazing. Now, how in Illinois, were you from like Chicago or somewhere yes, else? Yes, the Chicago suburb. So I was about, a, with no traffic, I was about a 25 minute drive from downtown Chicago. So I was in the South suburbs. Okay, wow. Now what made you wanna move to Florida? Tony, I just felt like I had been in Chicago for over 30 years. And I moved to Chicago, guess what? With $500 in my pocket. And God blessed me with a job, a brand new car, apartment by myself, no roommate within six months of landing in Chicago with $500. Now, what you went to selling drugs up there? <laughs> <laughs> so I moved up there to be with a boyfriend from college back in the day. We were supposed to get married. So you know what young and in love people do. They do, you know, sometimes some silly things. So <laughs> didn't have a job. I moved there. He was there. And, you know, we were supposed to, you know, do the whole marriage thing and, Tony never never materialized. Within six months, we were broken up. <laughs> but I stayed in Chicago. <laughs> oh, okay, wow. So you stayed there. So you made the move. And now, when did you bump into me online? Oh, you know what? It had to be right around um, just before I think the time of the pandemic jumped off. Like it was within that twelve month period for sure. Uh, so I believe that would have been 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About four years. Yeah. And now in this journey that you're on, what has, where has life brought you? Like, what are you working on? What is your purpose work these days? You know what, Tony, I just feel like we're living in a day and age where AI is here to stay and so much other advancements in technology that we haven't even imagined yet. And I happen to have a three-year-old great niece and a six-year-old nephew, great, great nephew. And my belief is that generations after us, they won't be able to work at a job and retire after 10, 20, 30 years. I believe those times are out. And so I want to be an example for my young ones coming behind me, that if they use what God gave them, bless them with, and, and help those gifts to mature and have faith in him, that they don't have to have a job, that they can be self-employed and that they can thrive without going to a nine to five, because I really believe those days are over with for the most part. Mm. And you know what? That is, that sounds kind of, prophetic because I could see that to where, and when you think about it, I would imagine in the Bible days, there weren't skyscrapers with corporations. It was like, Hey, you, you got your shoes that you done made your, your sandals. You go down to the marketplace and you sell them. Mm -hmm. And some days you're going to sell more and some days you're going to sell less because somebody else selling shoes too. So now mm -hmm. what, what separates you? Who's mm -hmm. the nicest? Who's going to work the better deal? Who mm -hmm. got out there first? Yep. And I've always had that vision that I believe we are all supposed to be a small business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even if we helping somebody else for a period of time, build a big business. That's right. But with the you so right with the way this AI is looking, mm -hmm. it's getting stronger and stronger. 
Tony, there's so much going on. I want to tell you a few things that I found out during my research because I did mention I'm writing a book. One of the things is guaranteed income. That's a real thing that's coming. It's not, it's not an imagination anymore. There's already monies, billions of dollars being deposited into bank account, a, a big global bank account, so that when AI takes hundreds of thousands of jobs out of one sector and then do it in another sector, another and another, there will be income so that people can live. That's where we are now. And then another thing is that Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders is pushing a bill through the US right now, the US Senate, so that we have a 32 hour work week, but you still get paid for 40. He said, because so, he said, number one, Americans are burnt out. Burnt out and stressed out and have a low quality of life because they got to work so much to compensate for the increase in price of everything with everyday living, right? And then he said, that on top of that, companies now are making more money, profit, more profitable than ever before because they are using technology. So how does that benefit the average working person? It doesn't. It's just the people at the companies. The companies continue to get richer and richer, and they share less of it with the employees. These are signs of the times, and we are living in the future right now. But we still got the old mindset that we need a nine-to-five job. So I want to, first of all, commend you for being someone, like you said, who had the vision to start this years ago. And one of the things I listen to your, on, on YouTube a lot, and one of the things I hear you say is that your family members joke with you that, hey, Tony's never had a job. And I'm going, yeah. <laughs> you know, that you're using your natural talents. And I love that. That's one thing I love about you and that you keep it real. So thank you for bringing us all wisdom that you share with us to help us make our lives better. And then we can go out and help other people. And that's amazing that you're doing that, that you're being a pioneer for your family, because that's what it takes is a lot of times people got to see somebody else do it mm -hmm. and you're doing that. So they're going to see you do it and then they're going to know, you know what, I have some things at my disposal mm -hmm. that she didn't have. Tracy didn't have this when she was my age. Mm -hmm. So now if she can learn how to adapt and use these things, yes. and I'm growing up with these things, mm -hmm. let me take this advantage. And so that's amazing. And then the other thing, too, is that you're doing purpose work. So tell me about that. Like, what are your services? Like, what? who are you wanting to help and what does that look like? So uh, thank you for asking about that. So, Tony. What happened during the pandemic for me in the beginning is I had, it was, I saw it as an opportunity to reset. Now, this is not the first time it's happened for me, but this was very a pivotal moment for me in my life um, because I, before my state of Illinois at the time started shutting down the government, before he shut it down, I knew that was going to happen. And I also knew that we were going to face a period where companies would hot, freeze to hiring. I knew that layoffs would start. This God showed me all of that through wisdom in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I knew it was going to happen and it happened just like that. So then I took it up on this, myself to go a step further. God, if you're doing this in the world, if I see this happening all over the world at one time, not just in the U.S., but it's happening all over the world, then what do you want me to do? Maybe this is a time for me to redirect what I'm doing. So that I'm living my latter years in a way that would be pleasing to you because you created me for a purpose. So that's one of the things I do with entrepreneurs is I help them to find in the work that they do, how it's connected to their purpose, not just purpose in general, but for the most part, what brings them joy, right? What is that gift that they have? that they're in their business working on and they're using that to provide a service because I work with service-based entrepreneurs. What is that? And then what do they feel like brings them joy and they want to do more of? 
So my goal with them is to, Tony, help them to amplify their mastery because they've mastered something. And I want to amplify that and in a way that attracts their ideal clients and most importantly, profitable opportunities. Mm, that's, that's, amazing. What I said. that's amazing. And you know what? People need that more than we realize because we can't stand outside of ourselves and look in and see ourselves. And I remember reading a quote that said, God didn't give us the ability to see ourselves through the eyes of others. Right. And that's why the coaching that you're doing is so effective. And that that's something where now I know everybody needs that. Now, how can people get in touch with you? Like where can they connect with you? One of the best places to get in touch with me is on LinkedIn, right? So I'm on LinkedIn, seven days a week I'm posting, right? And my goal is to post something that attracts the attention of my ideal clients. And it's, it's kind of, I take it out like the scripture says, the Lord says, my sheep will know my voice. So I feel like, hey, if you passing down that scroll and you see my post and it catches you, then you part of me. So I'm, I'm just, it's just a call out to them to come on in, let's have a talk in the DMs. Cause I'm not trying to sell. I want my message to speak, but I'm not trying to sell. I'm trying to empower. Can I share a story with you, Tony, real quick? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I believe is that it's very important, like you just say it, that sometimes we need to rely on someone outside of self in order to help us. I'm telling you a really quick story. So I was working a nine to five dead end job, didn't know what else I was gonna do. Knew I had a lot of skills, but for some reason I just felt stuck in that nine to five job working in the office. And I met someone working in the office and she said, you know what, Tracy, I'm getting ready to go to a brand new career and I think you should try it too is software instructor. And I said, oh, I really don't want to do that because I got a fear of public speaking. Oh, you know, just the thought of that just made me, you know, clam up. And so fast forward, Tony, I took her up on her advice. And do you know, I got hired within two interviews at two different companies, got hired. And do you know, my income shot up, I believe it was about 65, 70%. Shot up overnight. I didn't have to go to a college. I didn't have to take a certification course because you know what? She saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. She said, Tracy, I can remember, this was over 30 years ago. And I can remember what she said to me. She said, I know you can do it. She said, because you know more about the computer than I do. And she wasn't lying. I did. And when I went into that new position, so I'm leaving secretarial office work, going into software instructor and teaching all of the Microsoft products from Windows all the way through to their database. Outlook, Excel, all of that, Word, everything from intro all the way to advanced level. Ended up with, I got to travel on my job. It was local travel, but that was fine with me. I didn't really like being in the same place every day. I got an American Express expense account all of that just overnight because somebody said, I see something in you that you don't see in yourself. But Tony, in order for that to even happen, for me to get there, I had to believe it too. Mm -hmm. I borrowed her faith in me to take myself to another level. And since then, I never looked back. And I've done something like that at least three times in my life. And this coaching, consulting is another version of that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You got the gift too. And the thing about it is when you have the gift, you don't even have to, you know, really showcase it like that. Like you just operate, like you just, and cause I sense a little bit of a profit in you cause God will show you some things and, but you ain't got it over your forehead, but your clients will benefit from that gift and they don't even realize they what they're benefiting from. They don't realize that it's a little bit of prophecy in there 
about the the times about to change. Mm -hmm. This is your gift, and this is how your gift can show up in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and this is gonna make you recession proof. Yes, so be okay. Yes. yes, that part, Tony. Recession proof, right? Um, COVID proof. You know, pandemic proof. You you fireproof. Nobody can fire you. You know. You just proofed up. And I love what you said about the gift because the Bible said your gifts will make room for you. And I want to share another story, Tony, uh, that I think is appropriate is that when, when God um, spoke to Adam and told him to inhabit and, you know, all of that and told him to take charge and all of that, gave him those orders, right? He didn't say, go build a chair. He just said, go. And it was up to Adam to see the forest, to see the tree, to see the wood, to have the idea, to have the concept, and then to execute. But God gives us abilities, but it's up to us to hone those abilities and create something out of it. And he does the work behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. He made us. Yeah. And you know what? You saying that really speaks to me, and that's why what you do is so needed because a lot of people get in their own way and they're, they're in their head be, and they don't realize that the reason why their head is so cluttered with so much doubt and fear is because they working for God and they got a gift. And that's that, that small voice to make them doubt. Yeah. You got the gift to go out and create. Mm hmm but mm -hmm. sometimes you got to hear somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been telling my clients too. The same thing, what you're saying is like, listen, just one foot in front of the other. Like you got what it takes. And mm -hmm. so I really, I love that. And now do you do, we're going to put the link. So everybody look in the description box. You'll see the link to Tracy's LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. and you go and, connect with her there, send her a message. Now, do you do one-on-one? -on -one? You do one-on-one, -on -one, like hour sessions, one-hour sessions or 30-minute sessions? How does that look? Yes, I do. Um, and I need to get back on my mentor because that's where I would like for people to come for my one-on-one -on -one sessions to, to connect with me. Because I like to know that they came through your, through, through your source, you mm -hmm. know, you as a source. I don't want to just have, I could, I could, of course, I could just set up a website with that, but I'd rather not. So I'm going to recommit myself to joining my mentor again. So I would say, give me, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever, but yeah, they should look for me there. And if they want the one-on-one, -on -one, that's where I want them to go. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have them connect with you on LinkedIn. Yes. And they want to book a session, then you could direct them to your, my mentor to, you know, right. date and time and make the payment. And if it's not set up yet, then you just send them a PayPal invoice. But right. we are getting ready to go into some interesting times. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, sometimes we get it confused and they say, oh, well, you know, don't speak that. Don't speak that. It ain't about whether, because we ain't got no power over that. That's the world. That's what finna happen. Like, but we got power over our lives. That's right. And how we respond to what happens in the world around mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Because we can't say, ain't no recession happening. And then, no, other people might have a recession, but you could say, ain't no recession happening for me. That's right. Amen. But we don't, you know, the government going to do what the government do. Right. As long as you got you and you got a plan, then you could navigate. Mm -hmm. And so these interesting times, I'm, and that's why I wanted to do this interview series because, you know, I can only work with so many people. Mm -hmm. I have so many hours in a week that I can give mm -hmm. you know, to others. And we need more coaches like yourself so that if someone looks and say, you know what, Tracy made a corporate crossover. Mm -hmm. I never made a corporate crossover. Mm -hmm. So I understand how to build business and a personal brand, but yours is you was in corporate, you know, software instructor, and now you're a life coach. And so mm -hmm. it's a lot of people want to make that crossover or add coaching as a second stream. 
That's right. Passion work. So that's amazing what you're doing, Tracy. And what does the future hold? What are your dreams and hopes that you can bring to fruition and create? Any books or anything else, courses? Yes, I'm working on a book. I'm really excited about that. So I've got the uh, cover design now being crafted. Um, hopefully that comes back in the next week or so and I'll pop it up on my LinkedIn uh, page. In addition to that, uh, I would love to do some live events, you know, maybe uh, some mini, mini retreats. And then um, also, you know, any opportunities to team up with you eventually, you know, so that would be great too, but yes. I'm, I'm really focused on what God wants me to do next. So I vet all opportunities that come before me, Tony. I turn down a lot of stuff. I don't jump on every bandwagon, right? And so I, I choose the ones that God, I feel God leads me to choose. I have to feel inspired about that because I know, you know, there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing, you know, that come to steal, kill, and destroy. They want to take your ideas and run off with it and leave you, you know, they'll never leave us with nothing because God will allow us to create more. But you understand what I'm saying, you've been there. Mm -hmm. I know totally, that's amazing. And so that right there, that does kind of fill out the suite of products and something for everybody, having the books, having the events. So I'm excited to see you build that. And in my year coaching program, that's where I try to partner with my clients and mm -hmm. I want to get back out there as well, doing some live events. Mm -hmm. We have one of the interviewees who does some retreats. I can tell you will be a great retreat leader. And oh. so, you know, we're going to speak that, that that's going to happen. Speak it, let's speak it out there. All right. And then hopefully you get your body, you know, at least 10 clients or so that have met you today see you come connect with you and then y'all go ahead and build and start building that first event or that first retreat that's and right because we need it we got to be prepared and we need yeah. more front liners like yourself yes like you no thank you now i want to hear <laughs> from you too is is there a message on your heart or you know some some last words for the people that you really want to convey yeah, I want to convey this, Tony. You have to bet on yourself. At some point, if you want to achieve success, you have to bet on yourself. And I would not be here talking to you today if I had not bet on myself when that young lady told me, Tracy, I know you can do this because you know this better than I do. And I'm already off to get my position. She was already hired. But she was telling me, come on and let's go you can go too. And so that's my message to people that you have to bet on yourself. You have to take the chance and God is going to give you the next step. You don't need to know the next 10. Trust him with the next step. And when you trust him with that next step, it's just like when Peter got out the boat and walked on water, he took more than one step. Mm -hmm. But he had God with him all the way back until he got to shore. God never left them. So that's the message, Tony. We got to step out on faith. We got to take action. You're right. You're right. And I love that. So y'all heard it. Bet on you. Mm -hmm. And I try to echo that same message. I might put it on a t-shirt, Tracy. We need to put that on, <laughs> that on you. And that might be my Instagram post today. I'm inspired. <laughs> Because I, I always tell people that, but they think we crazy. And because they'll bet on a lotto ticket when you are your own lotto ticket. There you go. Bet on a sporting event, you know, bet on somebody else, but won't take a chance and invest in them. Yep. And the thing about it, what I have found as an entrepreneur, a purpose-based entrepreneur, is that the stock market cannot keep up with me. <laughs> Amen. When I invest in me, the return on the investment, the stock market give me that little 10% a year. Okay, that's good. But when you invest in you, you see a 100% return versus 10%. And then it's, it's you. Whereas the stock market, you investing in somebody else's company. 
That's right. So if they want to close it, if they want to go crazy, do something crazy, there go your money. Boom. Right. And we will sit up all of this money into a 401k. That's right. Waiting for a day that is not promised. Mm -mm. When we got dreams right here today mm -hmm. that we could be investing in and changing our life. And, you know, that take a certain type of mindset. So, Tracy, I commend you. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm glad you jumped out there and you're helping other people get off the boat and walk by faith. That's right. Walk by faith, not by sight. So thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. Awesome. Thank you. Everybody watching, make sure you click the link in the description box. Go connect with Tracy on LinkedIn. Set you up a one-on-one -on -one session. I know it's tough times for a lot of us and we can't see where it's going to come from, but invest in yourself and right. get prepared for what's to come and you're going to shock yourself. So thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Tony.